So if we want to be there for somebody or be helpful, when somebody's spinning around about all of the events that are happening in this world, we have to first look at ourselves. Hello everyone, it's Jason, and I'm here answering your questions about Zen, meditation, your practice, life, any kind of question. Today's question is about the things that are happening in this world and how we relate to them. Sometimes we get spun around by all of the things that are happening and we can get angry, we can get fearful, we can get depressed. Let me read this question for you. Hello, Jason. I was talking with a friend about the state of the world. She kept saying this world is just shit and kept naming everything that is going wrong. How do we hear the cries of the world and not let it send us into a tailspin of horror and depression? What teachings deal with this? I think many people can understand where this question is coming from. I've also have felt some kind of response to all the things that are happening in this world. Sometimes it seems very overwhelming, very challenging to see it clearly. I would say, as far as the teachings go, you might hear this teaching having a clear mind and a strong center. So having a clear mind just means seeing the truth of suffering in this world, not adding anything extra to it. So usually we're making something. That means there's the truth of what's happening and then we add our own narrative, our own opinions, our own likes and dislikes to it, which just gets us caught up into even more thinking, and then we get spun around, and then usually there's some kind of emotional response from that, and that can vary from person to person. Some people get very sad, some people get depressed. Some people get very angry. So having a clear mind is very important. And all that means is just seeing the truth of the suffering of this world, not adding anything extra to it. Having a strong center just means that we have the energy to be present with the truth of this world. I know sometimes we don't have the strength to really meet the moment and be intimate with it. It's kind of hard to talk about having a strong center. I know what I've read about it, Zen Master Sung Song would say, you know, if you breathe in very deeply and breathe out twice as long, very deeply, then all of the energy in your head and your chest come down to your center. In some traditions, they call it the hara. Some other traditions call it the energy garden. It's about two fingers below your belly button. Now, I can't say if that's a physical place or not. And I don't think it's a good way to maybe look at it. Because what's important is to experience this energy. I used to have a, a little plastic clown doll. It was named Bozo the Clown. Has anybody ever heard of Bozo the Clown? <laughs> so it was like a plastic clown that had a weighted bottom and you would punch it. And when you'd punch this clown, it would hit the ground 
and then it would come right back up. So this is kind of the analogy of a strong center. Sometimes I like to talk about it as our energy being balanced. Because what often happens is something happens in our life or maybe we see something that's very difficult, very challenging, it knocks us down. That's just part of the human condition. But how fast can we come back up? Sometimes something will happen to somebody, they'll experience something, and they'll be down for days. Some people will be down for months some people will be down for even years. So having a strong center or this balanced energy means that you will get knocked down. There's no way out of that in this human life. But we don't stay down. We come right back up. So again, we can be intimate and present of what's happening in the moment. The only problem talking like this is it looks like something we achieve, like we practice meditation and we grow this clear mind and we grow the strong center. But actually, that's not the way to look at it. It's not like working out. You know, if you wanted to be a bodybuilder, and have very big muscles, you would go to the gym and work out and eat certain kinds of foods, and you can measure your pro progress. Every week, you can measure your arms, you can measure your chest, and you can measure your legs, and you can see some progress, that you're getting stronger, you're developing more muscle. But the one thing about practicing meditation, or let's just say, if we're talking about clear mind and strong center, it's not something we gain. It's something that's already here in this moment. So you can look at it as more as letting go or getting rid of or maybe a better way of saying is not touching, not diving into our thinking, not fueling our thinking, holding it, attaching to it, adding our likes and dislikes to it. Because that just makes all of that stuff stronger <laughs> and we'll end up with a problem. So it's more of not touching. Sometimes it's said letting go. Clear mind is already here. And when we connect with the energy that's already here in this moment, our energy is already strong. And the only time any of this can happen is right now. Yeah, maybe sometimes it may take some time to truly let go or not to touch all of the thoughts and feelings that are appearing. But it can happen right now in this moment. We don't have to wait for some other time. So if we want to be there for somebody or be helpful, when somebody's spinning around about all of the events that are happening in this world, we have to first look at ourselves. <laughs> How are we responding to all of these things? And what that means is when we experience anger, how are we relating to it? How do we respond to it? when we experience fear or sadness? Can we look at these things with clarity? Intimacy. Compassion. Because if we can do that for ourselves, 
then we can do that when we are with others. So it's no different from any kind of life situation. If we're talking to somebody, we don't go in with some idea. Maybe we have some idea about what teaching are we going to use to help this person? How can my clear mind and strong center help when I'm talking to my friend? We don't do any of that. I recently heard a definition of compassion, and it was defined as suffer with. So when we enter a situation with a friend, a loved one, a coworker, and they're spinning around with their thoughts and feelings, we join them. We feel the anger. If they're frustrated, we feel the frustration. We feel the sadness. Just be with. And if we can do that without holding anything, adding anything, then how we respond will appear by itself. And I think the hardest thing is really trusting that. Because we always think, or I would say many of us think that we have to have the right answer, the right teaching for this situation. But the truth is, we don't have the answer. We don't have the teaching. All we have is this moment. I remember one time my teacher and I were going to the hardware store. He was driving and he always used to love to listen to the news. <laughs> A person was talking about some situation in the world and my teacher got very upset and said, that asshole. <laughs> How could he do this? What a bunch of bullshit. <laughs> and I remember being shocked. I can't believe he just said that. Isn't he supposed to be a Zen master? Isn't he supposed to be clear and calm? He's a human being. And this is what happens sometimes. We get into this kind of idea about what we're supposed to be or how we are supposed to respond. And I made a whole video about spiritual bypassing. If you haven't seen that, I'll put a link down below so you can check it out. But anyways, we got back to the Zen Center. And that evening, there was a Dharma talk. And when my teacher was talking, he was talking about the incident that we heard on the radio. And he was giving a teaching about suffering, the human condition, and what we can do about it. And I would say that was probably the greatest teaching that I learned from him. Because it's not about pretending that everything's okay or not getting angry or not being sad. We're human beings. So if we can look at our human condition clearly, see the nature of cause and effect very clearly, the nature of human suffering, how it appears, and what we can do, then we can turn it into something useful, something helpful. And that can really help this world. Those are my thoughts for the day. I hope this video was helpful. You can let me know by liking this video, put a comment down below, share this video with someone. I'd also be interested in hearing from you 
how you respond to all of the things that are happening in this world. What do you do when anger appears, fear or sadness? Let me know in the comments below. Okay, everyone, I hope you're all doing well, and I will see you very soon.